Well, hey everyone, hope you're doing well. We're just continuing our class in Living by the Book, written by Hendrix. And if you haven't already, I encourage you to grab this book, buy it, because it's a resource that I've had it for years and years. Ever since I went to seminary in Costa Mesa, it was one of our books for our class, and it was it's amazing. Um, I love it, and it, going through it again has been a huge blessing to me in my Bible study time. Um, and I hope it's a blessing to you in your Bible study time. Uh, but we're actually on chapter 12 today. We're on chapter 12. And again, we've been going over the 10 strategies to first-rate reading. And I, um, like I always do, I'm going to go over those 10 to get them ingrained in your head. Uh, 10 strategies to first-rate Bible reading. Number one, read thoughtfully. Number two, read repeatedly. Number three, read patiently. Number four, read selectively. Number five, which we're going to go over today, is read prayerfully. Number six, read imaginatively. Seven, read meditatively. Eight, read purposefully. Nine, read acquisitively. And ten, read telesco uh, telescopically. So number five is read prayerfully, and this is chapter 12 in the book. Um, he says a fifth, you know, this is a fifth strategy to use in unlocking the scripture, that's how he terms it, is read the Bible prayerfully. He says, Bible study and prayer, they should be, into, uh, what did he say? Integrally related. Prayer is really the key to effective Bible study, he says. Learn to pray before, during, and after reading the Word of God. This has been, for years, this has been super effective in my Bible study time because I'm not just reading like a lecture or reading a textbook. I'm reading the Word of God, which person is personalized and speaks to me in my life situation. And so I always pray before, Lord, show me, teach me, you know, uh, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to be convicted of? How do you want me to be comforted? How can I be exhorted or encouraged? Um, I, I pray that before and then during I'm praying, Lord, reveal this to me even as I'm reading it. And then afterwards, Lord, pray these scriptures in to my heart and my life. So pray, pray, pray. Prayer is especially crucial when you come to a place in your study where you're stuck and confused. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but it's true. When that happens, seek the Lord. Lord, give me insight. Help me discover your truth. And he gives a couple of suggestions, something to avoid and something to do. Number one, don't try to imitate other Christians. Um, Christians should pray corporately, but that doesn't mean they should pray identically. And uh, he says, I've discovered there are two groups of people who can teach you the most about praying. Number one is children. They're refreshing and realistic because they're just so real. They'll just say, just like write what is on their mind, right? When they're thinking it. The other group to listen to are new converts, he says. They haven't learned all the jargon. And let me just read you the story that he illustrates here in chapter 12. I'm going to read you the whole thing. He says, a man in our church came to Christ and decided to show up for a prayer meeting and a Bible study on Wednesday night. We had the study and then we broke into groups for prayer. Hey, Howie, where are we going? He asked me as we headed down the hall. We're going down here to pray i said well then i've got a problem well what's the problem i can't pray he admitted i mean i can't say it the way that you guys say it i said friend that's no problem thank god for that so we began praying i knew he wanted to participate but he was a little hesitant finally i reached over and i prompted him to go ahead i'd give anything to have that prayer recorded he said lord this is jim i'm the one that met you last Thursday, remember? I'm sorry, I, I can't say it the way the rest of these guys say it, but I really love you. Honestly, I do. And hopefully after I know you for a while, I'll be able to say it a lot better. Thanks a lot, see you later. That was his prayer, he said this guy was praying, he was just talking to God. He didn't have all the Christianese, all the Christian jargon. Without realizing, he says he was way over or way ahead of the rest of us because he was honest before his heavenly father. The only thing that ever moves him is our heart. So that's number one. Number one is don't try to imitate other Christians. Number two is do turn to script or do turn the scripture into prayer. Prayers of the Bible, he says, have one characteristic in common. They always focus on who the person is to whom the prayer is addressed. Looking at what we need, we should ask, who are we talking to? Know the recipient of your prayer is God. Know his heart, even as you're praying. 
And he says a recognition of our sinfulness too always allows or always follows a perception of God's holiness. We see God is so holy. We see that we're sinful, but we see that he still accepts us, his grace, keeping his grace in mind as we seek him. He says, but when we fill our minds up with who God is, then our true condition comes to light. He is the standard. He is perfect and we're not. We see as we're seeking him that we are desperate for him, that we are sinners, that he's our savior, and we'll even more passionately seek him. Um, And then he kind of talks about, uh, let's see here. Always pray. I love this. He says, always pray on the promises, on the basis of the promises of God. You know, the question is, well, what promises God made? Pray on the promises of God and seek him for what he's calling you to and what he's speaking to you. But as you're reading the word, pray, pray and and seek God. Turn scriptures into prayer. You can pray scriptures. That's okay as long as you don't do it like in vain repetition like Jesus warns against, like the, the Pharisees were doing. But uh, he he kind of references Nehemiah, and he says, you know what Nehemiah shows you? Begin with adoration. Nehemiah began seeking God with adoration. And then he occupied himself with who God was, right? And that will lead us to confession because we'll see ourselves in proper perspective. Sinners in need of a Savior, right? Then you're ready to petition God with your need. That comes last. Your need comes last. I love that that order of, of praying. Um. And then he actually gives us a, you try it. Um, he says, of all the strategies of first-rate Bible reading, prayerfully reading probably requires the most cultivation. Here are three projects to help you get started. I'll just read you a couple. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 may be the most famous passage in Scripture, and for good reason, it paints a beautiful picture of the tender relationship between God and one of his children. You can turn this psalm into a personal prayer by inserting your name wherever you see the first person pronouns, my, me, or I. Another exercise is Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. He says, here's another passage that you can make your own through prayer. Look at the tremendous promises of God in this text. Do you need him to deliver, uh, to deliver in your experience what he offers here? Turn this passage into your own prayer, asking God to do just that. So I love it. Just a couple exercises to turn the scripture into prayer because after all, the scripture of the Bible is a love letter to his children. It's a love letter to you. So that was chapter 12, you guys. God bless you and talk to you next time.